Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Epilogue Pulse. Let's get into it. First, I wanna give you a little bit of a background on what Epilogue Pulse is. In the past, if you were running an Epilogue machine, you had to have a Windows machine or you could use an Apple computer that is running Parallels that is running Windows. So it needed Windows to interface with the laser. You had to download the Epilogue software directly to the Windows interface, and then you could run the laser from that with different connection types. The main highlight of Epilogue Pulse is that you no longer have to download that software onto your machine, and it's no longer Windows only. So the best part about this is you type the IP address of your machine into your web browser. You will then pull up your machine. You'll be able to see the camera. You can still put in settings and things like that and be able to send jobs to your machine directly. Now you won't be able to print directly from Adobe Illustrator like you would have in the past or directly from Corel. There's certain file types that the Pulse app will work with and I will show you where to find all of that information. To walk you through the Epilogue Pulse app, I'm actually going to be using my MacBook Pro. Now this MacBook Pro does not run parallels with Windows on it. I'm going to be interacting directly from the computer to my machine over the Wi-Fi network, which is great because I like to design on my Mac and in the past I've gone to the Windows machine and then worked from there. I still do both because sometimes I like to directly interface from Adobe Illustrator. Other times I'm in a hurry and I already have it designed on my MacBook and I just wanna go straight from there. The other cool part is if you're used to designing on an iPad, you can actually directly send stuff to the machine from the iPad, which has not been able to be done before on an Epilogue machine. So this is new stuff this year that has come out that I wanted to make sure all of you were aware of, especially if you're a graphic designer that's used to using Apple products. One of the most important things about this is that you're gonna to have to have the machine turned on in order to interact with it and pick up that IP address. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my machine and then I'll show you how it works. To give you a little bit of a background, if you go to Epilogue's website at epiloguelaser.com, on their information, you can go to news and then the Epilogue Pulse, or you can search for Epilogue Pulse directly on the website. That will bring you to this page. And here you're gonna have Epilogue Pulse that processes jobs from Macs, PCs, and tablets with ease. So you can do this from your MacBook, you can do it from your iPad, you can do it from your Windows machine, whichever one you want to use. The whole purpose of this app is that you no longer have to download software onto the computer in order to interact with your machines. And then if you scroll down below, you're going to see you can still interface with the same connections as you've had before, USB, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. I'm choosing the Wi-Fi option. And if you continue to scroll down, you'll also see some frequently asked questions about this. The number one question that I had is what file types does this work with? And if you click on that, you see that they've already answered it. It is SVG, GIF, BMP, JPEG, PNG, and TIFF. I am going to be using SVG in this video, but I wanted to make sure that you knew certain file types will not work with this app. You have to use one of the ones that I just read off. Now for this to work, you're going to have to go to your machine and find your IP address. Now keep in mind that this is going to work with the new Fusion lines. So I'm using the Fusion Maker for this. And if you go on to the little touch screen that's on the side of the machine, there's a settings button. Click that and at the bottom, it will list your IP address for you. So I know that my IP address is 192.168.1.95. I will type that into my browser and I'm gonna hit enter and you'll see that it launches straight into Epilogue Pulse. In this case, I'm going to be opening a new file that I have stored on my computer. And I have a keychains project that I made in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that SVG. And you'll see that it opens it in the top left corner of my page. 
So the first thing I want to do is actually walk you through the interface a little bit. So you have your white space that is considered your design area. It has the rulers on the top and the left. If you right click, you can also ungroup your items. That way you only select the pieces you want to have. For example, I can highlight just this one area and then I can do my mirror at a smaller level or rotate at a smaller level. It just depends on what you're looking to do. Up at the top, you'll also have your typical menu bar. You can do an open project. You can add one. So if you click add, you can add designs to it. You can save it, do an undo, a redo. You can zoom in and out on your project itself. If you have it all highlighted, you can also mirror it or you can rotate it around. Just depends on what you want to do. And you can ungroup things as well to rotate smaller sections or mirror certain sections. Um, you can also invert if your artwork really needed that. And then over in the top right, you can also see it lists that I have a Fusion Maker 12. I can toggle the camera on and off so I can still see the bed camera if I want to do that. And then you'll see that I also have some settings. I can change it from inches to millimeters. I can do some attachments like the rotary if I wanted to use a rotary, a line of centering point. You could allow for diagnostic data to be sent to Epilogue. Those are some options in there as well. And then there's a help. If you need help, you can submit a ticket as well. Then the whole right hand side is your processes like your old Epilogue dashboard. If I click on the actual items, so what I'm going to do is going to drag these items over to a clean spot on my material. When it came in, it lumped everything together into one job. So over on the right hand side, you'll see the processes. You'll see a send button to send it to the laser. You'll see autofocus, on off, plunger or thickness, depending on how you want to do it. I'm not going to use the autofocus. I'm going to focus it myself. And then I have my job. So if I click on the job, I can split it by color, which is what I want to do. You'll see here that I get one that doesn't really have any color. This is kind of an erroneous piece that came over with the design. If I go to the top where it says engrave, I can click that and say off to turn it off and get rid of it. That way it does not machine. So then up at the top, I have my designs that are in black as well as my designs that are in red. The red is going to be a cut operation. Keep in mind that this app is relatively new and they're adding features to it. That means that there's going to be some things that it doesn't currently have that I wish it did have. One of those things is when I'm putting in my settings, you'll see here that I don't have the option to pick a setting from my library of settings. I don't see that option here, but thankfully I do have those stored on my other computer. So I know that my speed in this case for engraving, I'm going to make it 70. Now here's the other thing I noticed when I go to click and type in my value, I can't actually do that. I'm not sure why, if that's a bug in this or not, but what I can do is I can drag the bar up to the 70 that I want it to be. For power, I'm going to make it about 60. For my resolution, I'm going to make that 400. For dithering, I'm going to leave it as standard, and then I'm going to leave everything else as the default. So I'm going to go ahead and say done there. You will have noticed that my camera turned off. I'm not sure why it has been doing that. I don't know if that's a connection thing, but I can simply go back and turn it back on. Under the red, it is labeled as a cut already. So this one, my speed is going to be eight, keeping in mind that I'm cutting eighth inch acrylic on a 30 watt machine. My power is going to be 100 and my frequency is going to be 100. And I'm going to go ahead and say done there as well. In this case, I'm going to turn my engrave off just for now, because what I like to do with clear acrylic is I like to cut out the object, peel away the 
paper coating that's on there and then engrave the acrylic directly. I feel like it gives me a better engraving finish, but the cutting is a better finish if I do the paper masking on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and send the cutting operation over to the machine. We'll do that piece first. You'll see that it does a bar at the bottom saying creating job, job sent. Now that that job has been sent over, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the cut off. I'm gonna turn my engrave back on, and then I'm going to go ahead and send that over. So now both pieces will be at the machine so I can toggle them and choose which one I wanna do first. I'm gonna go ahead and cut first and then engrave and I will show you all of that process. Let's go over to the machine and see if it worked to take it from my MacBook to my Epilogue Laser. Before we get into the machining, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Epilogue Laser. So I've been using Epilogue Lasers for over 10 years and they are still, in my opinion, one of the best machines on the market. If you've been in the market for a laser, be sure to check out Epilog because they make a variety of machines, both CO2 and fiber, as well as a Galvo, and all of them are made in the USA. I know people that have had their machines for over 20 years running their business, and Epilog still performs for them day in and day out. If you're in it for the long haul and want a laser that will grow with your business and be able to sustain that production level work, Epilog is an excellent choice. If you want to get more information, check out epiloglaser.com slash maker dash experiment to see more. If you have any questions about their machines, feel free to put those in the comments below and I will do my best to help you along your laser journey. Thank you to Epilog for helping make my videos possible. And with that, let's go back over and machine these on the laser. All right, so I have the keychains off the laser and I already showed kind of a close up of them on the machine. One of my favorites is definitely the Jurassic Park one. This is one of my daughter's favorites. I just like how it shows up on the clear acrylic. The cool part to me is that this was on my MacBook and in the past, I would not have been able to go directly from my MacBook to my machine and the Epilog Pulse makes that happen. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. They are building it still. They're adding features to it. They're enhancing upon it. So it's definitely not the same level of detail and configuration and changes that you can do in the dashboard that you can download onto a Windows machine. But it is a great start for them to build from and enhance new features along the way. So there are a few things that I wish that it did. One is I wish you could pull up your settings from your library and be able to just import them instead of putting them in manually. The second one is I wasn't able to type directly into those fields. I am running the latest firmware on the machine and everything else, which is how the camera operates. I did notice that if you are not on the latest firmware, the camera toggle would not work for me. But once I updated to the latest firmware on the machine, it did work. So in case you're running into that problem, that is the fix for that one but I'm not sure why I cannot type values directly into there. There's also some things around grouping and ungrouping. You could see that I was able to ungroup, but I wasn't able to group them back together. 
I also was not able to type in positionally where I wanted the design in an X and Y format, as well as I could not type in the scale. It didn't give me that option. While there is room for improvement, this is something that I know was a top of the list thing for a lot of people that design using a MacBook or an Apple device that they couldn't run an epilogue with their computer that they had and they would have had to buy a new one. So they chose not to go with epilogue for that reason. And now this solves that problem, which I think is a great thing to get more people into the laser world. Overall, I do like the Pulse app and where they're going with it. And I'm really excited to see what features come into this as it progresses and as they spend more time on it. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. If you have ideas for future videos, leave those in the comments below and I will do my best to look at all of those. Also, check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share things along the way. But I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.